This video will demonstrate the step-by-step -step configuration of Zentiel, which uses Samba 4 as an Active Directory domain controller. Now we'll begin with some basic assumptions. First of all, that you have a working installation of Zentiel Server 5.0. Uh, we're not going to get into how to install this because it's basically a vanilla Linux installation. The Zentiel ISO is an Ubuntu ISO with the Zentiel packages pre-integrated. We also want to be sure that you've assigned a recognizable host name appropriate to your environment, something like DC1 if it's the primary domain controller. And be sure that you're using a modern file system like ext3, ext4, xfs, or btrfs on the root partition. The ACLs, which are necessary for Active Directory, do not play nice with old file systems. And you should probably be using a modern file system anyway. So once you have your Zentiel running, you can log in through a web GUI at port 8443, and you'll need to do some initial configuration, starting with selecting and installing packages. At a minimum, select the domain controller and DNS server, but you can see there are a number of other packages that may be useful in your environment. Click Install, confirm that you want to install those packages, and Zentiel will install your packages. And once those are installed, you'll be greeted by the Network Interfaces Configuration Wizard. And here you need to assign a static IPv4 address, a subnet mask, a default gateway, and then these two last ones are labeled Domain Name Server 1 and Domain Name Server 2. That feels a little misleading to me. I think it's better understood as a DNS forwarding address used when this DNS server is not authoritative. So that's probably going to be your default gateway if it leads to the Internet, and the secondary one could be whatever. I used Google in this instance. Next, you need to set up some additional details, provide your domain name, your fully qualified domain name, which is your host name plus your domain name, the static IP address of this server, which is the primary DNS server, an administrative account, password, and then your NetBIOS domain name, which is essentially your domain name capitalized, and your NetBIOS computer name, which is your host name capitalized. When initial configuration is done, you can click go to the dashboard. You'll be greeted by a very clean GUI, a nice sidebar menu including module status, system, network, logs, software management, users and computers, domain, file sharing, DNS, and firewall. And then over here in the main dashboard area, you have a quick glance at general information, module status, resources and network interfaces. Here's a look inside the DNS GUI where you can make changes to your DNS settings critical for the functioning of a good domain. And here is the file sharing GUI where you can add a new file share to your domain. Simply fill in the details per your environment and click add and populate it out to your users and computers. Here's the users and computers GUI. You can see there's an administrator and there's the domain admins, the schema admins users, and the domain controller. If you select any of these, the properties area will appear where you can make changes. And here's what users and computers looks like after I've added a user and a secondary domain controller. Now it's time to test it, and an easy way to test your new domain controller is to join a Windows client to the domain. So here's my Windows 7 client. I need to change the IPv4 settings to make sure that it points at my primary DNS server, which is also my new Zentiel domain controller. Once I've done that, I need to apply just a real quick reboot. And when we come back, I'll log in as the local user. Then I will head over to Start, Computer, right click, Properties, and then Change Settings. And in here, I will join the domain. I'll need to provide credentials of a user that has 
authority to join Windows clients or clients to the domain. My TWEST user has such credentials. Once I enter them, it will communicate with the domain controller and voila, welcome to the Samba4.net domain. But of course, that will require a real quick reboot. So we'll restart. And when we're back, I will change the user, and now I can log in using domain credentials. And that's a quick and easy way to confirm that my domain controller is functioning and is allowing me to join Windows clients to the domain.